Let me put up two charts here. The first chart is, the, is just a chart reflecting what Dr. Lubchenco and, and you, uh, Dr. Holdren, have referred to, which is this uh, dramatic spike which has uh, uh, been created in uh, the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere. Uh, this seems to be an incontrovertible fact. No one actually denies this. It's measurable. Uh, and it correlates almost directly uh, with the industrialization of not only our country but Europe and increasingly in China and India as uh, the amount of CO2 emitted globally has increased. And in fact, in 2009, uh, the trend is that this will be a, a warmer year than last year was. And so where the spike is going back up again if all data up until the end of November uh, continues on for the concluding uh, month of, that, of this year. So we can see this trend and it's gone unabated uh, since the rise of the industrial era. Now I'll show you another chart. This is a chart of the uh, number of home run hitters in, the, uh, in Major League Baseball uh, from 1920 until uh, today. Now the average was 3.3 uh, players uh, were averaging over 40 home runs per year from 1920 uh, until the 1990s, which is why Ted Williams and Willie Mays and Babe Ruth were so famous that they could hit more than 40 home runs. Then all of a sudden, in the 1990s, there was a huge spike in the number of people hitting more than 40 home runs. Now, Major League Baseball said, well, you know, perhaps the players are getting stronger. Uh, others said, well, perhaps the baseballs are, are juiced. But once a steroid testing program was put in place over the last three years, an amazing thing has happened. There was a precipitous drop in the number of 40 home run hitters back to normal levels. An artificial substance injected into players a huge increase in the number of home runs, but once it was removed, we went back to normal let us, le levels again. Now, some people were, of course, arguing that the new normal was people hitting more than 60 home runs and 70 home runs, huh? Well, uh, it turns out that the testing program brought it down dramatically once we dealt with the reality of the science uh, of what was going on in baseball. Well, here we have the same trend, but we have yet to inject the solution, that is the reduction in the amount of CO2 being emitted by the United States, by Europe, uh, and uh, by other parts of the world. That is our challenge. It is incontrovertible. Artificial substance uh, put into uh, man or nature causes big differences. And so these spikes are very, very coincidental. Huh? Now, there were deniers in Major League Baseball. They said, oh, no. Steroids has nothing to do with it. And by the way, Major League Baseball wanted to go along with it in the same way that the coal industry, the oil industry, other fossil fuel industries want to go along with the myth that nothing really abnormal is happening. But the consensus of the science in the world, the National Academy of Sciences of every country in the world, is that this spike in CO2 is man-made. And that it is causing dramatic changes in our oceans, to our glaciers, in the Arctic, in the villages of Alaska that see their permafrost melting and their villages falling into uh, the ocean, and droughts being created around the world. And all of this evidence uh, is basically so massive that there's no way to avoid it. And so what the minority has decided to do, what the deniers, what the oil and coal industry want to do, uh, is to use uh, the few emails of a few people who are doubting this science, which is a consensus around the country, uh, as a way of trying to cast doubt the same way Major League Baseball did uh, on the undeniable correlation between the injection of these artificial sources into the atmosphere uh, are having on our planet. And so, you know, we can, we can continue uh, this, you know, uh, pretense, and we can use a small number of emails, I suppose, to have a larger debate. Um, but I think that it would be better for us to accept the science, uh, to accept this curve, uh, to basically deal with the reality that the minority has no answer for why it has spiked so dramatically, why it's going back up again this year. They sit over here using a couple of emails uh, as a reason why we should stop all efforts uh, to deal with this catastrophic threat to our planet.
planet. And so since no alternative theory has been presented, at least baseball said, well, the players are getting stronger. Huh? That was their answer. But everyone who was looking at it was saying, how can they be so much stronger than the players just five years ago? Well, that's the same thing that's happening with this CO2 trend. Okay? There is no explanation for it other than that it's man-made. And by the way, you can say, well, it's not that big. Huh? What's the difference? A, a degree or two. Huh? Well, a kid has a temperature of 98.6 normally. Well, you add a couple of degrees temperature uh, to that child, and they're at 100.6. The doctor says, well, you know, you've been at that new normal for um, 14 days now, uh, so don't worry about it. Uh, Ma'am, your son Joey, he's going to be fine. The new normal is 100.6. Well, who would ever accept that as an answer because there was only a two-degree change in the child? huh? Well, that's what we've got here for the planet, a two-degree change in the overall temperature of our planet is just as catastrophic as it would be for a small child who would receive no medical attention because the doctor had concluded, or a small number of doctors would say, the child can live with the new normal of two degrees higher. Huh? What parent would ever run that risk uh, of not giving treatment to that child? Huh? And that's what we're talking about here. Yes, there's a normal temperature for the planet, but you add on two more degrees, three more degrees, it is catastrophic. You know, you get the consensus, as Dr. Holdren is saying, that there is a six-foot rise uh, in the a sea level of our planet. That's not frightening enough for the other side. They want to know why it's not 11 feet anymore. Well, six feet has such catastrophic consequences for Alaska, for uh, the Everglades, for Boston, uh, for Cape Cod, for Southern California, uh, that it's almost unimaginable what the changes would have to take place in our country. Okay? So what's the answer? Again, we keep saying, what are you saying is the answer to why this is spiking so dramatically? Where's your evidence? Just by casting doubt with a few emails on a consensus globally and a century-wide study of this subject, well, gentlemen, is, yield. No, I will not yield at this time, is not, in, is not uh, going to deal with this issue. Okay? These scientists are our best people in our country. And they are joined by thousands of others, not only here but across the world in their construction of their analysis. There is no alternative theory that the minority is proposing, other than that which we know has been funded uh, by the oil and coal and other industries that want to continue business as usual. Now, we've tried to construct in the Waxman Markey Bill an alternative way in which these issues could be dealt with. Uh, and they, of course, don't want to deal with that uh, issue uh, because they would prefer their denial. What I'm going to say to you, uh, Dr. Holdren, if you could, um, is I would like you to go through the other points that you would like to make uh, in response to the questions that were raised by Mr. Sensenbrenner uh, in his you're opening question over, of you, which I have allowed all of the minority members to do so. And I, the, the, the courtesy I've extended to each minority member, I am going to extend to myself. Dr. Holdren. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think actually we got to the main points in the further discussion of sea level rise, and I wouldn't have anything uh, further I feel I need to add. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Holden, very much. Uh, uh, Mr. Um, uh, Sullivan, do you have any additional questions? You do not. Okay. Well, then uh, uh, I will allow uh, um, any written questions that will be posed to the witnesses uh, to, uh, to uh, be made by members who are not here. Uh, we thank our two witnesses for their testimony here today. Uh, it is extremely valuable at this time in our planet's history uh, for the two of you to be working uh, for our country and for the world. Uh, it, um, it, it's an honor for us to have you here today. We thank you for your distinguished service.